Back in 2008, I played a game on Nick.com. This was a normal occurrence for me. I had just gotten back from school and I saw this game based on a Spongebob episode. I played through it and had a bit of fun, but eventually it started to get really hard. I found it really frustrating and stopped playing. From that day onward, I never touched it again. Until now, that is. That game was Who Bob What Pants, based on the Spongebob episode, kinda by the same name. Whatever Happened to Spongebob was a special episode that aired toward the end of Season 5. Many of us might remember it by the name Who Bob What Pants, which was the title used while the episode was being advertised, similar to Where's Gary or Lost in Time. They really gotta stop confusing us like this. In the episode, Spongebob leaves Bikini Bottom after making all of his closest friends really upset with him. They all coincidentally call him by the same nickname, Idiot Boy. While away, he develops amnesia and comes across New Kelp City. There, he quickly finds out that people don't take kindly to the act of blowing bubbles. Meanwhile, Bikini Bottom falls into chaos because Spongebob isn't there to make Krabby Patties, so all of his friends come together to try and find him. It eventually turns out that the reason blowing bubbles is discouraged in New Kelp City is because an intimidating street gang called the Bubble Poppin' Boys hate them. This is because when they burst, the soap gets in your eyes and causes pain. Really makes me wonder how they feel about shampoo. The leader was actually voiced by the popular actor Ray Liotta, so we got a bit of a showdown between Spongebob and Tommy Versetti. But the anti-bubble gang is quickly defeated when Spongebob blows a bubble and sends them flying off, never to be seen again. Maybe they ended up here. Though I guess at least one of them survived, because according to the Spongebob wiki, the green one would later be seen in Glove World R.I.P. as the mascot that quits. I guess he had to change his lifestyle after that horrific bubble accident. He's truly a tragic background character. <laughs> But anyway, Spongebob is deemed a hero and becomes mayor, so his friends are able to find him and bring him back home. Squidward breaks an egg, Spongebob's memory comes back, then New Kelp City hates him because bubble soap keeps getting in everyone's eyes. Now, people had some mixed opinions on this episode when it first aired. People thought a lot of the characters were mean-spirited, and that the amnesia aspect didn't contribute much to the story. It also gave us this infamous image. What, were you expecting something else? Okay, fine, it was this one. But anyway, like with many other special episodes, it received its own Flash game on Nickelodeon's website. It was called Who Bob What Pants, with a bunch of question marks. It was based on the scene where Spongebob faces off against the Bubble Poppin' Boys and seems to take inspiration from Bubble Bobble. This was developed by Sarbakin, like many Spongebob games in the late 2000s were, and it even matches with their usual style. The music makes it sound like we're about to visit a rodeo. In this, you run through different stages and blow bubbles around the Bubble Poppin' Boys, then they drop items you can collect for points. If you take too long to hit a bubble, they burst out of it. Seems simple enough, but the levels add more unique features as you go. The first level is a basic stage where you can figure out how everything works. You have to space your attacks perfectly, or else you'll end up getting hit. You only have seven lives for the entire game, so getting hit just once is scary. You also might notice that the different gang members have their own fighting styles. The green ones just walk around, the purple ones come charging at you, and the orange ones jump across ledges. Now the second stage might take you by surprise after you've defeated them all, because a second wave will drop in from above. This is a standard occurrence, and occasionally a gang member will land on me and take a life away. That's a little cruel, especially since you have no way to recover the lives you lose. If you lose them all, you have to start over from the first stage. This can discourage you from trying out the new feature in level 3. We have these holes that you might try to avoid at first. I was sure that I'd lose a life if I fell in, so I didn't even want to risk it. But actually, it causes you to fall through a hole in the ceiling. I found this out by accident, so imagine my relief. There's also a new enemy. If you kill this red one, he drops half of a best friend's forever heart. If you kill two and collect both of them, all enemies will be bubbled. This stage also forces you to get into an uncomfortably close proximity with some of your opponents. Your best tactic is to repeatedly bubble when an enemy comes anywhere near you. You can also jump on bubbles to reach higher platforms, but they don't stick around for very long, so it's often more trouble than it's worth. Then it's on to level 4. You might notice that it's nighttime now. This is because every stage is getting progressively later if you look in the background. I really like that detail, but it means Spongebob's been fighting these guys all day. Not only that, but absolutely slaughtering them. He's trying to break his Whirlybird record. 
Eh, it doesn't matter, he's going by Cheesehead Brown Pants, so these murders will never be under his real name. And yeah, on level 5, it shows that you've been fighting all the way until morning. I seriously wish I had SpongeBob's energy. Maybe the survival instincts help. For some reason, the game starts going really slowly whenever I reach these last two stages. It only lasts for a bit before it sorts itself out, but it's strange. Now level 5 is usually where I die, because I can't seem to reach it with any more than one life. It wouldn't be that complicated of a stage if not for that. The best strategy is to watch the enemies and get a sense of their route. Then you can intervene and attack. You probably won't win if you just rush in bubbles blazing. But level 6 is the last stage, and it also has the most unique setup. So it makes a little more sense for the game to avoid giving you extra lives when you only have 6 levels to clear. At the same time, it's extremely easy to lose them, even if you're sure you're doing everything right. Like, look at this. Come on, my whole game came to an end because of that. You know, I think I get it. I understand why the Bubble Poppin' Boys hate bubbles so much. Sure, the fact that they get in your eyes might be an issue, but that aside, these things are absolutely murderous. Like, it's been a whole two days and Spongebob has annihilated all these people with bubbles alone. Don't you think he's only proving how dangerous they are? Frankly, I think I'm on these guys' side. Maybe the green one should go on a mission to avenge his fallen comrades. Look out, Cheesehead, the people of New Kelp City aren't the only ones after you. But anyway, yeah, this game is a little difficult. Is it as hard as I remember it being back in 2008? Eh, not really. I've played far more difficult ones. At least it isn't... um... well, you know. So the game as a whole is okay. You can give yourself a decent challenge with this Spongebob version of Bubble Bobble, especially if you intend to get a high score. Just make sure you're aware of your surroundings at all times and plan your moves carefully. Or just brute force it until you manage to win. That works too. The two strategies of life. But no matter what, I think we can all come to the same conclusion here. Bubbles are freaking evil. Let's do away with these stupid things. <coughs> ah! Ow. What happened? Where am I? Why am I playing a Spongebob game in front of an audience? Better end this video. So anyway, thank you for joining me. I will see you when I get my memory.